Hi, welcome back to the channel. Just me, Steven, today, and I'm here to answer the question, what is basic training really like? I could give you tons of one-word answers saying it's challenging, it's difficult, it's frustrating, but it's enlightening and it's exciting. But I really want to get into the meat and potatoes of the subject. So, speaking of meat and potatoes, food is something that most people are very curious about. Now, the food in basic training, you may have heard is meh. Personally, I enjoy many of my meals. Not all of them, but many of them. And it always meant at least 10 minutes in which I was sitting down and eating instead of standing at attention, marching, running, doing some other exercise, or whatever. It was rest. And the food, honestly, most of it wasn't bad at all. And other food that you might eat in basic training are MREs, which you might have heard of. Meals ready to eat. They come pre-packaged. Um, they come with warming, uh, a bag of a warming chemical. Uh, you add water and it heats up your food for you and you can use that or not. And all the food is still technically edible whether or not you warm it up. Uh, there's even candy in some of them. And depending on your drill sergeants, you can or cannot eat the candy inside your MREs. Now, MREs, some of them you might not like. I like most of them, with the exception of just a few. Um, also, something else to know about food and eating and basic training is when you do go to the, to the mess hall or like a cafeteria, you have to stand in line. And not only do you have to stand in line, but you do have to hold your tray up in front of you. Typically, this was my experience. You hold your tray up in front of you and you have to sidestep everywhere you go, keeping your feet together and apart, together and apart, always. And you have to do facing movements like an about face, which is a very specific movement you make to turn, to make a 180 degree turn. Um, aside from that, you're going to have drill sergeants shouting at you in the food lines to make sure you're doing every, getting your food in the, the prescribed ways. And if you spill food, then they'll shout at you. If whatever, if you're do so, doing something wrong or something that they prescribe as being wrong, then they will shout at you about it. It's one of the drill sergeant's most enjoyable times. If you're a drill sergeant, it seems as though that's what you enjoy the most is shouting at privates in the food line. And as a private, it, your first couple days, it'll probably be your most stressful, although you might find it entertaining, although don't laugh in front of the drill sergeants. Um, time limit. When you're eating, there's always going to be a time limit, especially at the very beginning. No matter if you're sitting on the ground eating an MRE or sitting in the mess hall, sitting at a table eating, eating the, the food provided to you there, there's always a time limit. You have to eat your food quickly. So you can you know, eat your food quickly and get out. So keep that in mind. Also, the next thing, aside from food, something that you're likely going to be curious about is your sleep. Now, sleeping is done in a bay. A bay is a very large hall, which fits about 60 beds. And beds are going to be on bunk beds, so, you know, bottom bunk, top bunk. And so there's 60 beds total lining the walls, and in one bay, you're only going to have uh, members of the same sex. So you're not going to have co-ed um, bays, all right? So if you're a male, you will be sleeping in a bay with 60 other males. If you're a female, you're going to be in a bay with uh, 60 other females. Uh, uh, your basic training might have a smaller number of females. Um, that's more common. It's more common to have a large amount of males and uh, roughly half as many females. That all depends on where you're going to basic training and just the season, so you never know. But it's typically a smaller number of females. But regardless, you're going to be in a bay full of members of the same sex as you, and you will not, cannot ever go into a bay other than the one you sleep in unless directly told by your drill sergeant. And typically, you're only going to be going into your bay when the drill sergeant gives you permission to do so. Everything you do is done with the permission of your drill sergeant. So, it's not too complicated, but do not, do not, do not ever enter the bay 
of the opposite sex unless your drill sergeant directly tells you to do so and they're going to have a specific purpose and you'll likely have a battle buddy with you or a soldier of the same sex as you um, to go with you to accomplish whatever task the drill sergeant tells you to do. Moving on, your sleep is going to take place usually between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, that might fluctuate depending on your specific unit, you know, who your drill sergeants are, who the, the commander of the, your company is, and they might have different rules, different sleep schedules, and also depending on what training you're going to be doing that day or what training you did the day prior. Uh, it might change when you go to sleep that night and when you wake up. You might have a road march that starts at 4 a.m., so you'll need to wake up at you know, 2.30, 3 o'clock uh, in the morning. So, moving on, that's, that's what your sleep is going to be like. Um, oh, also, when you're asleep in your, in your bay, do not talk. You're only allowed, you're, when you're during sleeping hours, you are to be laying in your bed quiet. You don't have to be asleep, but as long as you're in the bed and you're quiet. You don't even have to be under the covers if you don't want to be, but you do have to be in your bed and quiet. And you have to be in the uniform that was prescribed by your drill sergeants. Uh, I know that they will be that you are given uh, some warm weather or some cold weather gear, like some thermals, uh, unless the drill sergeants give you permission to wear those in the bay. You are not allowed to wear thermals in the in your bed. You have a specific sleep uniform. So, uh, everything is very regulated, as you, if you haven't noticed so far. Now, also, during the sleep hours, you may be assigned a duty. One duty is called Fire Guard, which is you and a battle buddy, you and another soldier who also sleep in that bay. It's your job to be awake for one hour, at least, to be, stay, be awake in the bay, making sure that everything is going fine. Uh, you'll typically be doing some cleaning and there's there's going to be a book in the bay saying what you should be doing at what hours of the night. Um, it's all given, all the instructions are given to you. Another, guard, another ship uh, that will be given to you is CQ or Charge of Quarters in which you will be, you and a battle buddy will go down to where or go wherever the drill sergeant is who's also on that shift and they'll give you instructions on what to do for that hour. And cleaning, doing some odd jobs, whatever needs to be done, you might just be told to sit in a chair and wait for the hour to be over. And then you go back up, you go back to your, to your bay and you go to sleep. And then another is weapons guard. There is going to be times where there will be weapons out and those weapons will be, um, need to be cleaned or they will just be sitting out and they need soldiers to be standing by them, guarding them. That's just a, a rule, that if there's weapons that are not locked away, there needs to be soldiers guarding them at all times. So that's another shift that you could have in the middle of the night. So there may be more, but those are the ones that I experienced when I was in basic training. So moving on from sleep, your safety. You might be concerned about your safety. Your family might be concerned about your safety. After all, you are training to be a soldier, a warrior. You are trained to use weapons. You're trained to use weapons to kill people. Now, this means there is some safety risk. You're also going to be going through obstacle courses. Uh, you're going to be jumping. You're going to be crawling under things. You're going to be um, you're going to be out in the woods during some of these times. You're sleeping in the woods, uh, as well as you are going to be uh, at the obstacle courses. You be uh, experiencing, you know, heights. So you're going to be up high in some circumstances. So you'll have to face a fear of heights if you have it. Um, so there are some safety risks. Um, keep in mind, your drill sergeants have been trained on how to mitigate any risks in these situations. They know the typical problems that soldiers encounter when coming into these environments, and they know how to avoid risks and they know how to act quickly whenever a problem occurs. So your drill sergeants are well trained and they can keep you safe.
but your best bet is to always, always, always follow their instructions, especially in matters of safety. That is, that's your safety. Now, something that everybody is likely concerned with is money. Now, you already know your, your recruiter is going to tell you what rank you're going to be when you join, what your pay is going to look like when you join. Uh, but when you first get in, your first month, uh, your, your, your first paycheck when you join the army, they're going to use that money from that paycheck to pay for your gear, your uniforms, your wet, your, your, your water, your rain jackets, your warm weather, your warm jackets, your fleece, or like your fleece lining and stuff like that. All sorts of things, gloves, um, your, your PT, your physical training uniforms. Um, everything that you need as a soldier will be given to you in basic training and it will be paid for out of your first paycheck. On top of that, any other things that you need to purchase while you're in basic training, they will, they will give you a, what's, what they call an Eagle Star card, that's what they called it when I was there, and on that is $300. That $300 comes from your own paycheck. So they're giving you $300 of your own pay to use while you were in basic training, and those $300 are the only money that you can use with the exception of the fifty dollars you're permitted to bring with you. So you may have you may have learned that you're allowed to bring up to fifty dollars to basic training. So you can use that and you can use the three hundred dollars on the Eagle Star card, which is like a like a like a gift card. So you can use that to pay for anything you need. You're going to be buying things like wet wipes possibly cough drops, deodorant, soaps, uh, all sorts of things to, while you're in basic training. Um, so now communication, you're going to be concerned about communication likely since you want to be talking to your loved ones. Um, there may be, and I emphasis on may because it's only a possibility, that you're, there may be a possibility that your drill sergeants will allow you to use your cell phone while you're in basic training. So. It's best just to bring it with you, and the worst that could happen, they'll take it, they'll put it in a Ziploc bag with a 3x5 card with your name and information written on it, and they'll store it with everybody else's phones. And everybody else's phones will be the same, in a Ziploc bag with their name. And when it comes time where they will permit you to use your cell phone, which typically happens at the end of, of each phase, so you have three phases in basic training, red phase, white phase, blue phase, and then I suppose you can say the last week is red, white, blue phase. Um, so at the end of each one, when you accomplish whatever the drill sergeants ask you to do, they may, they may deem it uh, worthy uh, for you to use your cell phone to call home, see, talk to your family. Uh, they might give you a couple minutes. They might give you five minutes. I heard of soldiers having up to 30 minutes to an hour to be calling loved ones. Who knows? I had a couple minutes each time, so it wasn't fantastic, but yeah, I wasn't guaranteed the ability to use a phone anyway, so those few minutes were better than I thought I would get. But something you can do, and you can do roughly as much as you want with whatever free time you're given, uh, is write letters. And I encourage you to do so. Write home. Write your loved ones. Let them know you're doing fine in a letter, because you never know if you're going to get the chance to, to call them. So write them a letter and let them know that you're doing how you're doing. Okay. So these are some of the more important things that you might be curious about. And I encourage you one thing, one last thing that I encourage you to do when going to basic training is to be committed, be committed to yourself, be committed to the promise you've made when going into basic training, when you raise your right hand and you you swore or affirmed um, that you would uphold the Constitution and, and everything else, um, be committed to that. You made a promise, so be committed to it. Everyone, and I mean everyone, who has a physically healthy body and a physically healthy mind can go through basic training. Everybody can graduate basic training who is healthy. Thank you very much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, 
comments, your questions, whatever information you think other people ought to know about basic training. And again, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.